All right, sense of God. Don't just forget about all your troubles and your trials. I'm a hard fighting soldier on the battlefield. I'm a hard fighting soldier and I'm on the battlefield. Lord, you know I'm a hard fighting soldier and I'm on the battlefield. I'll keep on. On my head and in my head, my sword and shield. I'll keep right on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I keep. Now I've got to walk right, talk right, sing right, and pray right. I'm on the battlefield. Oh, I gotta walk right and talk right, sing right. Oh, 
thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. We say thank you. We say thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank. I want to thank you, Lord. Just want to, I want to thank you, Lord, because you've been so good and you've been so, you've been so good, Lord, you've been so Because you saved my soul, you saved my, save my soul, Lord, you saved my soul, Lord, you saved my, Lord, you saved my soul, and I just want to. I want to thank you, Lord, and you made me whole, you made me whole, Lord, you made me whole, Lord, you made me whole, Lord, you made me whole. I want to thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. Say thank you. Say thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I want to thank you, Lord. Let all the earth rejoice. Here absence of been light. And darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice. It trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Come on, sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Oh, 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 how great is our God. Come on, sing with me. How great, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great, how great is our God. Come on, sing. 
sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great how great is our God oh when you're the name Oh, my God is awesome. 
I'm encouraging you to take advantage of what it is that we're offering and what it is that we're trying to do for you. Uh, my wife and I were talking about it this morning, you know, and when we came to the conclusion, you know, we always say that the work of the church is to save the lost and to keep the saved saved. And she and I talked about it this morning. She said, you know what, the hardest part of our job is keeping the saved saved. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That's the, that's the real job, just keeping the saved saved. you got to also want it in order for you to attain it and acquire it, all right? We're going to continue talking about this. Now, we've spent some time talking about this. But there are two things. If, if we're going to have, if money is going to break, if we're going to break free, rather, of the power and the influence of money, there are two things that we need to do. Or if you're listening, say, I'm listening. Because this is important for us to get. Not only will this apply when we talk about money, but it actually applies to everything we reference to in comparison to the secular world and the spiritual world. This principle is the principle that we have to have that enables us to overcome all the obstacles that we have in this world. Number one, there are two things. First thing, there's a principle. There is actually a principle that, that we have to grasp. We have to grasp a principle and, and, and hold on to this principle tightly. Then once we have the principle, the second thing, we have to take that principle and we have to bring it into our hearts through the cross of Jesus. Those are the two things. It sounds simple, but it isn't. It's challenging. Number one, we have to grasp a principle and then take that principle and bring it into the center of our heart through the cross of Jesus. Well, what's the principle? You said we need to grasp a principle. What is the principle? Take your Bibles out. What is that principle? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 11 and look at verse number 24 now. In Proverbs chapter 11 and verse number 24. Anthony, do you have that? Let's look what the Bible says. If you have, is everybody there? We, we need to be here together. If you're there, say amen. amen. Look at the principle here. The Bible says in uh, Proverbs 11 and verse number 24, what does it say? One man gives freely. One man gives freely. Now, this principle I'm getting ready to share with you, we're going to read it here in Proverbs, but we can actually find this, this principle that we're talking about here, this, this very simple principle runs throughout all of the wisdom literature. It doesn't matter whether we're, whether we're reading in Proverbs, whether we're reading in Ecclesiastes, whether we're reading in the Psalms. This principle runs throughout all of the wisdom literature of Scripture. All parts of the Old Testament, this principle is always there. The principle is simply this. It says what? One man. One man gives freely. Yet gains even more. Yet gains even more. No, no, no. Get that. One man gives freely. Yet gains even more. Yes. The more you give away the more you get. That's a biblical principle that runs throughout all scripture. One man gives away freely, yet gains. The more you give away, the more you get. Another, read. Another. Another withholds unduly. But comes to poverty. But comes to poverty. Over and over and over again. This is an agricultural metaphor. Are you following me here? The scriptures give us an agricultural metaphor here. The more you sow and scatter your king is going to come. The more you harvest the more you reap. 
In other words, the, the, the more seed that you sow, the more seed you disperse, the more you're going to reap fruit. But the more you hoard your seed, the less you eat. The more you spread, the more you reap. The more you hoard, the less you eat. That's a biblical principle. It's an agricultural metaphor. By the way, it's crucial to realize this too. See, the Old Testament says you reap what you sow. Means if you give away your money, you become rich. But if you hoard your money, you become poor. Now, right away, people get confused right here. And they think what this means is if I give more money away, I'll get more money. Now, that's the first error in your thinking. That's what we, we, we think. Okay, so that, that biblical principle is if the more money I give away, the more money I'm going to get. But think about it. This is an agricultural metaphor. And with an agricultural more metaphor, when you sow seed, you don't go out and reap more seed. You don't sow a field full of seed. And then when it's harvest time, go out and expect to collect more seed. Amen. No, no, no. You reap fruit. You sow seed, you reap fruit. Your seed doesn't come back to you in the same form that you gave it away. We got to wrap our mind around that fact that the form that I disperse it is not necessarily the form that I'm going to get it back. And that's what the Bible is saying. It's talking about scattering your money and being extremely generous to the poor and to the church. And it says, in giving it away, you're going to bear real fruit. In the same way, the Bible talks about scattering your money, being extremely generous to the church, to the poor, that fruit is going to come back, but it's going to be real fruit. In other words, real, real riches. Real riches are going to come to you. Now, this is a principle. Scattering gathers. Gathering scatters. Are you following that? Scattering if I scatter my seed, I'll gather. Scattering gathers. If I gather, if I hoard my seed, it scatters. How so? When you scatter your gifts to the poor, you're uniting society. If the well-off hold on to their money and spend it only on themselves, if those who have resources only use their resources for themselves, you have a divided society. Did you realize that? Gathering, which means hoarding, scatters. Are you following? We've got to think theologically. We've got to think larger. We've got to think outside the box. When I scatter, I gather. But when I gather, meaning hoarding, it scatters. If you give your money away to the church, the job of the church is to bring God and humanity together. Amen. That's right. Amen. Isn't that what it's all about? Our responsibility as the body of Christ is to bring God and humanity together. When you support God's work, when you give to the poor, when you give to the church, you're uniting society. You're bringing God and humanity together. That's what I'm doing right now. Uniting God and humanity. But that 
principle, if you get the principle, and I told you, we're just going to wrap it up by dealing with the principle. We've been talking about this for the last several weeks. <sighs> but we've got to pull this principle together. We need to bring that principle into our hearts. Through the cross of Jesus. And we've talked about the power of money. We got, we've talked about the power of possessions and how that you can, the money will make you arrogant. Money will make you shallow. Money will strip you of your character because you're so busy pursuing money that you have no time to build your character. And when the, wrath, the day of wrath comes, you don't have what it takes to stand there with poise and deal with the difficult days. Why? I've invested all my time chasing money. I've let it be my God and I've failed to invest in myself. What the Bible is letting us know here is that money will destroy you if you let it be your God. So I've got to destroy the power that money has on me. How can I do it? You look at the cross as the, as the ultimate example. Look at what the Bible says. Go to Anthony, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. This principle that I share with you, the principle was simply this. You, you, you tell me, what's the principle? If I scatter, I gather. Only one sister got the principle. <laughs> Thank you, Kayla. One sister got the principle. But if I gather, Lord, I scatter. That's the principle. Proverbs 11, 24 says one gives away and gains. One holds on to unduly and comes to poverty. The cross is the ultimate example of this principle. That's why in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it says, you're going to reap what you sow. Remember this principle he says here. Drop down to that verse number 6. Read what the Bible says after that. Remember this. He says, remember this. Whoever sows sparingly. Whoever sows sparingly. Now, we, we sit here and read this every Sunday. Every Sunday. We sit here, and, and some of us can get up here and quote it. But they have not grasped the principle of it. Paul says, remember this. Whoever sows so sparingly will also reap, will also reap sparingly. sparingly. Whoever sows generously, generously will also reap, will also reap generously. generously. Now hear what, what's going on. Paul is dealing with the church. The Macedonian Christians were poor. But they gave a lot of money. To famine relief. The Corinthian Christians had a whole lot of money. But they weren't generous. Now why is it that way? Folk who don't have a lot just, they just share with you everything they have. But I tell you, give a little something. And now you have an attitude that I got mine. <laughs> the Corinthian Christians had a lot of money, but they weren't generous. Paul uses an Old Testament principle in order to appeal to them, and he tells them, don't you get it? You reap what you sow. If you hold on to too much, you become spiritually poor. If you are willing to give your money away, you become spiritually rich. Why? Scattering gathers. Gathering scatters. The more you hoard on to something, the more you lose it. I don't care what it is. The more you try to hold on to it, 
then he goes on to say in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Now I want you to really go ahead and look at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Drop down to about verse number 9. I want everybody to get this. Here, here's the ultimate example of scattering in order to gather. Read what the Bible says. For you know the grace of our Lord. He says, get this. Parallel ways, he says, for you know the grace of our, Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we understand the principle of grace. Grace is becoming the recipient of something you don't deserve. Every one of us who is here in the body of Christ, the only reason, every time somebody becomes a child of God, that's a miracle. People wonder, oh, does Jesus do many miracles today? Are you a Christian? <laughs> That's a miracle. Because everybody in here has sin in your life. No one in here has lived a perfect life. Yet Christ, because of what Christ did, God sees Christ when he looks at me. And the fact that God sees me as redeemed, as righteous, as justified, beyond condemnation, that's a miracle. Amen. Amen. But look at what he says here. That, that's the product of grace. He says, now for you know the grace of our Lord, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ that, that though he was rich, Christ was in heaven. Christ was with God in the beginning. John chapter 1, verse number 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14, the Word became flesh. Christ was with God in the Word. But it says yes. that though he was rich, everybody say rich. Christ was rich. Yeah. It says, yet for your sake, for your sake he, became poor. he became poor. What does that mean? He emptied himself. He emptied himself. Brother Yelton dealt with Philippians chapter 2 on Wednesday night. Talk, that, that's called, we're talking about kenosis theory. It's called the kenotic hymn. In Philippians chapter 2, kenosis means to empty oneself. The Bible says that though he was rich, he became poor. He emptied himself of his glory on the cross. Why? Read. So that you. So that you. Through his poverty. Through his poverty. Might become rich. Might become rich. He's saying that's the ultimate principle, an example of scattering together. Amen. I don't see it, brother. Amen. I don't see it. Well, the ultimate principle of scattering together is the cross. How? Ah. Well, on the cross, Jesus was broken to pieces. He was scattered. They whipped him with 39 stripes. They pulled the very flesh off his body. He was scattered. They broke him. They speared him. They nailed him. His bones crunched and splintered as they drove nails through his hands and nails through his feet. On the cross, he was broken into pieces. Jesus was scattered in order to gather. Jesus scattered his glory. Jesus gave everything away. Jesus Christ was scattered on the cross in order to gather us. We're gathered here now. Why do we have each other? Think about it. Why do we even have one another? Why do we even have our relationship? Why do we even love one another? Because Jesus was scattered 
and he was destroyed on the cross. When you see that Jesus Christ did that for you, anything else your heart would treasure, anything else you set your heart on as your main treasure, is going to demand so much from you. Yeah. Look at the difference here. Anything else. You see what Jesus did. He wants to be the treasure of your life. Yeah. And you see what he did. Anything else you make the treasure of your life is going to demand so much much from you. I gotta make this much money. I gotta live in this kind of house. I don't want one but two houses. I gotta have this kind of car. Anything else that you make your treasure is going to demand so much from you. Any other treasure you set your heart on will make you sacrifice. Let that, I want that to marinate. I don't care what it is. If you make it church, Amen. it's hard for work a two and a half job. Because they got to have this house. And here you are, ripping and running. The demand is put on you, and you are ripping and running, trying to beat the sacrifice of your God. But Jesus is the only treasure that sacrificed for you. He's the only treasure who could sacrifice for you. When you see him scattered in order to gather you to his father and to each other, oh my goodness. We look at Proverbs 18 where it talks about people hold on to their money and they think it's their fortified city because they're trying to find security. Remember we read that? But when you see what Jesus did for you, what he sacrificed for you, now, that there's, there is real security right there. Yeah, right. You want to feel secure? Look at what Jesus did for you. The cross proves that Jesus will do anything for you. That doesn't make you feel secure. I can't get a single amen today. I, if I don't sweat, they don't say amen. Are you, are, are you understanding what I'm saying here? Jesus proved on the cross, I'll do anything for you. That doesn't make you feel secure. There's security, but get this, there's, there's significance. The place we run to try to get significance is in the acquisition of more money. But Jesus valued you enough to do anything for you. That doesn't give you a sense of significance. see the security and the significance you have in him. He, he, he'll do anything for you. That should make us feel secure. He's got me. Look at the extent he'll go for me. And I don't need possessions or, or money in order to feel a sense of significance. He valued me enough to do all of that. For me. That gives me a sense of significance. So when you see the security.
security and the significance, suddenly money no longer becomes my identity. Suddenly money no longer becomes my security. Money becomes just money. It's just money. It loses its divine qualities. It's just money. It stops being security and identity. It's just money. It becomes money. And now that it's just money, I don't have a problem giving it away. Amen. Didn't get too many amens there either. Are, are you following the principle that I'm trying to get you to see? When you put things into spiritual perspective, money is just money. Jesus Christ scattered himself in order to gather us. Now, you go do the same. Amen. 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 You see your model, you see your example, now you go do the same. Scatter your gifts. By the way, you might say, well, well brotherly, how much, how much should I give? Yeah, you're just a typical preacher. You, 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 you just, you're not being practical. How much should I give anyway? Well, my first response to that, like I said, is that's the wrong question. So anytime somebody asks you, well, how much should I give? You need to let them know you're starting off with the wrong question. Well, what should the right question be? The right question should be, why don't you want to give it more away? Amen. Why don't you want to give it? If you take the cross into the center of your economic life, if you take the cross into the center of, of who you are, seeing what he did for you, scattering himself for you in order to gather us together as the body, it will make you want to give more. It demotes money. When you get your spiritual walk right, it demotes money. You'll finally be able to send it away. So the first question is, why don't you want to get more? The answer always is because you haven't taken the cross into the center of your heart as you should. Well, what's the second question? Well, the second question is, well, if I want to give more, how much should I give away anyway? I would suggest that in the Bible and the scripture, there's two rules of thumb. In the Old Testament, every believer was required to give away 10%. 10% of everyone's income went toward the poor or went towards ministry in the Old Testament. If you, by the way, are making it a habit to give at least 10%, Congratulations. If you're giving 10%, you have at least met the Old Testament standard. But if you go to the New Testament, here's what you'll see. Jesus on the cross, the ultimate example of scattering and gathering. Jesus did not tithe his blood. Jesus did not tithe his life. He gave it all. He sacrificed. That means the Old Testament rule of thumb is 10%, but the New Testament rule of thumb is you give as much as a way as you can in order for there to be experienced in your life a measurable sacrifice. Well, well, that. You should be giving away so much money that you have to ministry and to the poor that it makes a measurable difference in your life. You see, some of us won't give because we say, well, I got vacations coming up. <laughs> well, you need to give measurably to where you sacrifice. Maybe you don't take that vacation. Well, amen. Amen. You don't have to say,
say amen. Just pay attention. <laughs> See, we don't want to sacrifice. What Jesus modeled for us is the ultimate example of scattering mm -hmm. together. Yeah. You need to give enough away until there is a sacrifice. What we want to do, and I told you this last Lord's Day, what we want to do is we don't want to sacrifice. We want to tip God. Mm -hmm. Just tip him. 10%, 18%. Now you go to Red Lobster, you'll see 10%. 12%, 15%, 18%, and, and, and you want to be impressive, so you go up there and throw in 18%. Because <laughs> you want to look like a, a baller, yeah. You, <laughs> you want to look like you a baller, so you give the 18%. Just put it on the card. <laughs> okay, but... Even when you do that, you don't sacrifice. You don't even feel it. You just tip it. That's right. That's right. All right. Now you take all the income you have and you look at giving to God and you need to give in a manner to which there's a measurable sacrifice. If you don't feel it, you haven't sacrificed. You need to think about the clothing that you buy. Mm -hmm. so I said, okay, brother, you better that now. Now you better. <laughs> the number of shoes. Well. If you aren't feeling it, <laughs> you aren't sacrificing. If it's not making a measurable difference, if you are not sacrificing yet, a sacrifice is felt. Look at what Jesus did on the cross for you. Take that into the center of your heart and money will just become money. Scatter your gifts and wait to see how he works in your life through that. We've been talking about generosity. We're going to continue next week. Dealing with generosity. But wrapping up what we've dealt with for the last few weeks, I needed to bring us to this point of looking at this thing where we reevaluate our relationship to our possessions and our grasping that principle. That principle is if I, if I give, I gain. If I hoard, I lose. Understanding that principle and understanding that when I give, my seed away. I'm not looking for more seed. I'm not, uh, don't let people make that the ministry of prosperity, that if I give my money away, that I'm going to get all this extra money. No, when you seed, you don't put your seed out, you go get your harvest, you get the fruit. Amen. But then you've got to grow spiritually to appreciate the spiritual fruit that God is going to give you. God has given you big fruit baskets. But we can't see it because we're looking linear. We have a linear perspective of things that's secular in nature. I want you to learn to see the fruit. The fact that we're even gathered here right now, our presence here is fruit. The fact that we exist as a people of God, that's fruit. Amen. So don't ask how much should you give. That's why am I not giving more? And then I guarantee you, you'll find out where your God is. Mm -hmm. But if you're giving and you really want to give, the Old Testament, 10%. That's why you see it says up here, it says tithes and offerings, because you, you, the tithe is not a sufficient. That's the Old Testament principle. But the New Testament principle is I've given my tithe, and now I've got to give my sacrifice. Amen. And if you don't feel it, you haven't sacrificed. Let's get our leaders up front. All of our leaders up front. All of our
my elders, deacons, associate ministers, you don't want to leave yourself for it. I'm going to wrap it up right here. Again, I'm encouraging you, meet me at Southside at 2 o'clock. Let's go and support their effort. Let's go in large number. Let's be God's people and encouraging one another. If you don't want to give, people don't want to give money, but I, I promise you, I, I guarantee you got, more, you got more time than money. Somebody said, well, I don't have time to go over there. Yeah, you got more time than money. You want to hoard, you want to hoard both. Hoard your time and hoard your money. If you're here this morning, you need to reconcile some, some things spiritually with you and your God. I'm, I'm, I'm challenging you. It's decision-making time. It, it becomes an issue of integrity, of spiritual integrity. Am I going to be who I say I am, or am I just putting on a show? Is this just an act? If I, am I just here to impress the people who are around me, or am I here because I really want to get this thing right with God? You heard that Sister Patricia Evans passed away last Lord's Day. Dr. Evans' wife at Southwestern Christian College, his wife died, and the funeral is coming up this weekend. I mentioned the last Lord's Day how fragile life is. I had just said that last week. I just mentioned the fact that, because everybody talks to me, and said, Brother Lee, why are you always talking about death? Because we're going to die. <laughs> you going to die. And just because you don't think about it, I want you to really think about it. The fact that you live, there's no way for you to live without it ending in death. And you're not thinking about it won't change the reality that the fact that you are alive, life ends in death. I'm either going to go to your funeral or are you coming to mine. I hope I attend yours. <laughs> I want to have some encouraging words for your family. <laughs> I want to encourage your people. <laughs> but it's going to happen. I'm either coming to yours or you're coming to mine. We've got to take that fact into our heart and take it seriously and stop existing from day to day in a flighty, irresponsible manner. If you're here and you're part of God's spiritual family, but you need to realign yourself again, just come down and ask for prayer. These men are here to service your needs. If you're here and you're part of the body of Christ and you're just looking for a place to be able to worship God and serve God, where, where people love God, love each other, and, and are sincere, I'm not saying we don't have our problems. Apparently, well, we, it, it, anyway, you got people, you got problems, but the difference is we got people here who have problems, who know they have problems, but love each other in spite of the problems and want to work through the problems. And we understand that people are more important than problems. And if you're looking for a place to labor and to work, I say settle down right here. If you're here and you're not a part of God's body, you're not a part of God's family, you're not a part of the Lord's church, you can be by believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, receiving him as your Lord and Savior, being willing to, to, to allow God to change your heart. That's called repentance. Repentance is not changing your behavior. Repentance is changing your heart. And being willing to tell the world about Jesus as the Lord. And being baptized. When you come out of the body, uh, out of the water, you'll be united there with Christ and with the Spirit. And when you come out of the water, you become a, a member of the family of God. And from that point forward, there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. You're covered by the blood of Jesus. What Christ did on the cross, he scattered all those parts and body pieces. He scattered on the cross in order for you to be gathered into the family of God. That's the sacrifice he made for you. And because of that, when God sees you, even with your deficiencies, when God looks at you, he doesn't see you. Everybody should be saying amen. Amen. When God looks at you, he doesn't see you, he sees Christ. I don't know about you, but that's a hallelujah moment for me. If you need to come, do it. We're going to stand, we're going to sing the song of encouragement. It's decision making time. Let us stand. I give myself away. 
Everybody sing, I give myself. Give myself away so you, so you can use me. I sing, I give myself away.